Greetings, Mason Storm here. On today's episode, we're going to look at making some mozzarella sticks using panko crumbs. Stay tuned to see how it's done. For our ingredients, I have an unknown amount of mozzarella cheese, which is what I had left over, a tablespoon of milk, a teaspoon of cayenne pepper powder, a cup of panko crumbs, half a cup of flour, and two eggs. Now as far as making matzo sticks go, we're just going to cut our mozzarella into smaller pieces and we're going to use that for making the matzo sticks. If you cut them really small, you get a lot more breading because it's all about surface area. And you have more surface area if they're shorter than if they are longer, assuming the same piece of mozzarella because there's additional ends if you cut it in half compared to whatever, whatever. So if you want something a little bit more crispy, a little bit more bite size, make them small like I did here. But it's actually quite a bit easier to make them a little bit bigger. Because handling them once they get so small becomes a little bit tricky. And if you're too abrasive on your handling, they can kind of fall apart and make quite a bit of a mess. So that's not really the greatest thing in the world. And near the end of cutting these, I decided to cut them into three pieces instead of two pieces. I think cutting them into two pieces would have made it a lot better. They would be a little bit bigger and easier to handle. Either way, you can cut them however you want. The process is pretty much the same. And now we're going to mix our cayenne pepper with our flour. You can add whatever kind of seasoning at this point that you want, maybe a little bit of garlic powder. Something to kind of bring life to the matzo sticks so they're not completely plain. And once we're done with our flour, then it's time to work on our egg mixture. And for that, I'm just going to add in the milk and then just kind of beat it till it's nice and combined. And that's kind of the end of that. And we'll, of course, just kind of put our panko on the end. And then we kind of have our system in place of our breading process. You know, we got the cheese, we got the flour, we got the egg, we got the panko. And then we'll just run the cheese through that cycle until completion. The cycle is really quite simple. First we take our cheese, then we put it in the flour, make sure it's all nice and coated, make sure all the cheese is split up, we don't have two pieces stuck to each other. Then we'll put it in the egg wash, and make sure there's egg all over the place and then we dump it in the panko and kind of press the panko into it so it kind of sticks better and then we just put it on our plate I'm using a plate to put these on so I can separate them all so they don't all bunch up and stick to each other then pull the panko off one from another so there's kind of that little bit of a process now a wise person once told me the trick to doing breading is to use one hand for dry stuff and the other hand for wet stuff that way you don't get a giant mess everywhere of course I didn't follow that advice while doing this as you can see I made quite a bit of a mess and I got so much egg in my panko I ended up having to had to replace the panko the good thing about doing this like breading cheese as opposed to like doing breaded chicken is that your risk of cross-contamination uh, it's not really there there's no raw meat so it's uh, quite a bit more forgiving that way. So you can do things that you wouldn't normally do if you were doing breaded chicken. So that's kind of a little bit of an advantage. Not sure if there's a better way to get the flour to adhere to the cheese in the first place. But it might be possible to do a double egg wash where you would egg wash it, then do flour, then egg wash it again, then do the panko. That might get a little bit better uh, breading coverage. It's something to experiment with and I didn't really have the time to do that today, so in another video I might give that a little bit of a whirl. I know it works good for doing chicken that way and I don't imagine this is all that different. For best results, you're probably better off freezing it once you're done here, but I'm going right for it. So I got a small saucepan on the stove top, going for kind of a medium heat. I ended up turning it up a little bit later on. And I'm just going to fill this with a little bit of oil. So I'm going to do a shallow kind of deep fry type of thing or a shallow fry, I guess it's called. Anyway, well, what I was saying before is that if you freeze them, it's a lot easier to cook them because 
the outside will crisp before the center turns into a mushy mess. And if you're just making them kind of fresh, the problem that you can run into is that, you know, it'll cook the outside, but at the same time, the inside will be completely done and then all your cheese will kind of escape. And that's a little bit frustrating, a little bit tough to work with, but it can kind of somewhat be managed, I guess. It's just more difficult. Like I said, it just makes it easier. Your other option too would be if you bake them in the oven or use the oven in the broiler mode to kind of put intense heat right on the top because you want them to cook nice and fast. But it's neither here nor there. And uh, as you can see there, I put the matzo stick in and took it out right away. My oil just wasn't hot enough. It should sizzle when it goes in. One of the ways that you can test your oil is to sprinkle a little bit of salt into the pot and if it kind of makes a noise, then your temperature is right. And then we just load in all the matzo sticks and we cook them for a couple of minutes till we get some color on them and then we take them out. Once they start leaking, they're done, which uh, making them in such a small pot like this was probably a mistake. A bigger frying pan that you have better visibility of what you're cooking would most definitely be a lot easier. And if you made them bigger, it would be a lot easier as well. But I decided I was a masochist today and this was the way I was going to make my matzo sticks. And I made this before having any coffee, so there's always that as well. So once a matzo stick starts to leak, you got to get it out immediately because the second it starts leaking, two seconds later it's going to be empty and you're going to be left with a hollow crispy shell. Which is going to taste good, but be a mozzarella stick with no mozzarella in it. So the key is to be nice and quick and just get them out of there the second you see any kind of real coloring to the degree that you want or that they start leaking and just get them out as fast as possible and try to be as gentle to them as well if you can. But my spoon here was not the ideal instrument as I continue to whine about the mozzarella sticks that I was making. But it's fine, you just keep putting them in and Eventually you get kind of the hang of it and they start turning out properly. This is why I say it's a good idea to freeze them first because typically most restaurants when they're making mozzarella sticks they already have them frozen and then they just throw them in the deep fryer and then so many minutes in they get all the color of uh, that you kind of want that deep fried color and then you just take them out and you're done. Or you start to see them leak and then you get them out. Especially if you're using an actual deep fryer that has a big basket in it and you can really kind of see what you're doing. It makes everything a lot easier, but when you're making them at home, it's a little bit different, but they still turn out really good and can taste fantastic, especially if you put a lot of seasoning into your breading. You can really take them to the next level that way. And your freshness and everything is also top notch, so there's definitely benefits to making your mozzarella sticks at home. but it's not quite the same as the ones that you get at the restaurant. Make enough of them, pick out the best ones, and you got yourself a nice good Instagram picture. So that's how you make mozzarella sticks. Let me know how you make yours. And if you like my content and like to see more of it, please like and subscribe. And until next time, stay awesome.